Hey sneaker friends, today we're going to have a look at the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Are you ready? The Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent was available on Nike's website. It was $275 on their website, but it was only there for a limited time. I unfortunately was not able to get a pair. Uh, so I actually went over to StockX and paid way too much money and I didn't get it in my size either So so this is a men's size eight and a half It was the best I could do because I was really interested in this shoe and learning about it uh, Especially for myself being such a runner. So let's dig into the details starting with the outsole There is a lot going on on the bottom of this shoe Let's start with the back and work our way to the front So you do have zoom X foam that is exposed to the ground But you also have rubber pads that are inset here now now the rubber hardness is about 70 short A and they're about two millimeters thick. They're exactly in the areas where you're going to see a lot of abrasion to prevent wearing the shoe wearing out. Now as you get in the midfoot here you can see the rubber transition out, the foam transition out, and you have kind of a ledge where you start to see the two airbags sitting. On top of that, you have this large piece of black rubber. Now, this rubber, if you notice, looks totally different than other kinds of normal rubber. That's because it's blown rubber. Now, blown rubber has some advantages to it. It also has disadvantages. Basically, it's rubber that's mixed with air to make like a softer, more cushier uh, outsole. And what it actually does is gives you a little bit of cushioning, right? So your rubber generally is not giving you so much cushioning, but when it's blown like this, it's thicker and you're able to get some cushioning. This blown rubber goes up to six millimeters in thickness, and that's a lot more. If you had regular rubber, it would be super heavy. That's another benefit. It's a little bit lighter weight. Now, the negative of blown rubber is durability. It's not as durable. It will wear out a little bit, and that's because it's not solid, dense rubber, right? There's air mixed in there. So as you abrade it, it'll start falling apart just a little bit more, but it's is a little bit negligible. So you're getting the benefit of the cushioning and you're getting the benefit of the lighter weight of it uh, at the expense of durability. The blown rubber, I did measure the hardness and it was about a 64 Shore A. So it is slightly softer, as you can tell, than the 70 Shore A that's in the heel. Now 64 to 70, you might think that's not much of a difference, but when you feel it on the shoe, you can definitely tell the difference. Now that rubber piece does wrap all the way up into the toe. You do have good coverage of rubber on the shoe. The midsole is also where the action is at in the shoe. Actually, it's everywhere in the shoe. So of course you have Zoom X foam all over the place. You have a layer of it on the top. You have a plate in there that you can actually see on the bottom. You can hear it. it's a carbon fiber plate. It actually says fly plate. Then you have more Zoom X foam under the plate and the heel. And then you also have Zoomex foam under the toe, kind of in front of where the airbags are at. That's a lot of Zoomex foam. If it was another foam, the shoe would weigh so much more. But keep in mind, Zoomex foam has great resilience, which means it, it's bouncier and it's also super lightweight. The negative can be durability of the foam. One thing to note about this carbon fiber plate is in the smaller shoes, the plate is more flexible. And what that means is they change the geometry or the thickness of the plate in order to do that. So if you use the exact same thickness plate in all of the size shoes, generally your athletes in smaller size shoes tend to weigh less, right? Imagine a, a size five women's versus a men's 13. Usually there's a bit of weight difference between them. If they both use the exact same plate, it's gonna be too stiff for the size five, but it might be perfect for the 13, but then all the way up to the 13, you, you know, it just might be too stiff along the way. So what they did is made the plates different in the different sizes to accommodate for that. I really love that because that's like size engineering of shoes and I would love to see that more and more. Now the airbags, they do feel pretty firm and there are two airbags in here, zoom airbags. So they have the fabric in the middle plus air pressure. I don't know what the air pressure is, but they do feel quite firm. So I'm guessing it's a little bit harder of a pressure. Now there's a huge balance happening in this whole thing. There's a lot going on. You have carbon fiber plate, air zoom bags, zoom X foam, different layers. All of this had to be meticulously balanced to give the shoe a good feel 
and create the energy return and the performance benefits that it had. I have no doubt Nike spent a long time engineering this shoe to get it just perfect. The midsole hardest is about a 47 shore A and you can also note that the midsole is definitely painted. So you can see this area that's kind of the blue purple, that's definitely painted, but I also had a shoe that has a chunk of paint missing. And again, I got these from StockX, so they probably, someone else used them and looked at them. They, they were not used, but someone else looked at them. Uh, but either way, there's a chunk of paint missing back here and you can kind of see the foam underneath. Moving to the upper, this upper is very thin, right? This, so what they did is they took, they call it atom knit. They took fly knit and they basically steamed it and stretched it to make it super thin and form to the last. So the last is the shape that the shoe was built around. And so you can see when you look at this upper kind of meticulously, you, you see de little tiny deformations in it. And that's because it's so thin and minimal. You see more in this upper in terms of construction technique than you'd normally see because it is so minimal. So you can see it has tons of holes in it, so it's super breathable. It's quite strong. You can feel it very, very stiff and strong. It has reinforcers around the eye stay. Uh, your eyelets are going through the upper and back out and they're reinforced underneath. In the heel, you have a pretty traditional heel tab. Same on the tongue. Now, the knit that is in the midfoot and forefoot is different than the tongue knit. The tongue knit is stretchy and kind of your standard traditional fly knit. In the heel, you can also notice a different pattern of fly knit back there. So it's pretty fascinating how they're integrating all these patterns together. Now, I would love to see the shoe have a little bit nicer kind of construction. You can see the adhesive and you can kind of see the glue marks, but I totally understand. It's built so minimally that you end up having that sometimes. Here in the heel, you can see where this might might be a problem area. This might rub against your Achilles or hopefully your sock covers it. Um, but just kind of little things like that I wouldn't expect at the, the price point of $275. Now inside for comfort, you do have a heel lozenge in this shoe. Now that is to lock the heel down. And again, that's a basically a material with foam and it sits right below the ankle bone, the malleolus, but up on the Achilles to kind of lock that heel in. So once you tighten the laces, plus it's a booty upper, uh, you're gonna fit right in there and kind of stay locked down. Now the lace is a little bit different. This is, to me, it's either a knit or a woven lace. It actually seems kind of delicate, but it's quite strong. So it's very minimal. Uh, you can see all the fibers in it up close and it is a flat lace, so it should stay tied pretty well. The heel counter is internal and I'd say it's a medium heel counter. It does go all the way up the ankle and that's gonna help you with the lockdown. It's also gonna help the transition to this big midsole that's hanging on the bottom. Now the shoe only has a four millimeter offset. It's 39 millimeters in the heel and 35 in the forefoot. That is some huge heights, but keep in mind this foam compresses and has great spring-like qualities. Plus you have the airbags and the plate in there. Now your sock liner is glued down. It is a two to three millimeters of foam with a top cloth on it. However, I was able to pull up a little bit and you can see the strobel in there. And the strobel is center seamed. Uh, which means it goes down the center of the shoe. Instead of going around kind of matching the sock liner, it goes right down the center. Now looking at the weights, if you look on Nike's website, luckily they had a men's eight and a half, which is what this shoe is, on the site. And it comes out at 209 grams or 7.4 ounces. When I weighed the right, it came in exactly like the website says, 209 grams, 7.4 ounces. Now the left was similar. It came in at 7.4 ounces and 210 grams. So it's one gram heavier, which as you know, this is that is super negligible. The weights, I'm not surprised in such an expensive and high performance shoe that the weights are almost dead on. They should be for, for the effort that they're putting into this product. All right, have you tried the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent? These names are getting way too long, by the way. Um, if you have, tell me what you think of it in the comments. I super want to run in these, but I can't find my size. I'm a men's six and a half or a women's eight. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you have an awesome day. See ya.